What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about runs and orchestral runs specifically. Uh, and so I'm going to go into what I consider orchestral runs and then how I would actually use them in a cinematic orchestral piece of music. So um, to me, runs are very, very simple. Uh, essentially, they're like fast scales, they're fast figures in general. They could be arpeggios, they could be broken chords, um, but usually when we think of runs, we're thinking of scales, kind of like ascending or descending, or even going um, up, down, you know, going a myriad of directions. And it's really uh, impressive when they're actually uh, used correctly because, you know, it, it feels like there's a sense of anticipation or something is going somewhere. So we tend to see runs the most in kind of like uplifting pieces of music when the uh, when the composer or the arranger is really trying to get the effect of um, heading into something or heading out of something, for example. Uh, I, I, I specifically tend to save runs for <clears throat> moments of um, suspense or like higher tension, you know, if that makes sense. So if we're talking instrumentally, um, the instruments that can do runs the easiest are strings and woodwinds. And also I consider the harp to be able to do these kinds of things because of their glissandi. And to me, I consider that a form of run, okay? So I'm going to be using my um, piece here, A New Beginning, which I wrote a few years ago to demonstrate, uh, to kind of show you a few examples of um, the runs I incorporated here. So even in the intro, I think I have a run here. So just have a quick listen to this. So here, going into that big F major chord, there was, you, you heard a woodwind run in the background there, and that's kind of just to accentuate the rise to that big moment. Um, so a wonderful library for this is Hollywood Winds by Cinesamples. So let me kind of just target into that moment where I, I put in the run here. Uh, should be this one here, the Hollywood Scales. So let me just uh, show you one more time here and show you what that sounds like on its own. Right, it has an instant Hollywood sound and these are recorded as um, full scales and runs. So very, very cool. Um, that's an example of hitting into a moment of uh, like a downbeat, for example, and it's, uh, you know, you, you just get that build, okay? Another example is kind of like in the middle of a phrase, uh, so if the melodic line is holding a longer sustained note, and there's more room for the other instruments to be doing some stuff, that's a good opportunity for you to use a run to kind of, uh, you know, do a little figure before the melody returns and then captures the listener's attention again. So let me show you an example of that. I believe in A2 I have this here. Okay, so I have one more listen to that here. Okay, so you hear that during those last two notes, the strings did a little uh, scale run up and down, and then the woodwinds kind of came up at the very end there and did a da -da -da, kind of finish that off. So. That's an example of holding a longer note and then letting the other instruments or supporting instruments do a little figure just to maintain the interest. Uh, so let me see where that might be. Could that be in the Berlin strings? Nope, then that must be in my special effects section. Give me a section, uh, give me a second, let me see. Maybe it's this one over here. Maybe that's just the ostinato. Nope, that's it. So I was using the Berlin strings um, ostinato legato there. So here, let me just show you what it sounds like with the melody going on and then uh, how that run comes in. Right? So they're holding this longer note. Dun! going from tension to release and while the tension is holding the run underneath also comes up to build and so it adds some extra tension and then when the when the two melody notes or when the melody note sorry resolves down to its core note the run hits the peak comes back down and then it's like you know you feel resolved which is really nice i think um and uh let's see i wanted to show you one more example the end of my bridge here so let's see here let's go from here 
Oops, here we go. So right there we get the Hollywood winds doing that run again. Oh, wrong track, sorry. One more, one more time here. And you notice this time it wasn't an F major uh, run. It was actually a uh, B flat major run, but starting on F. So the dominant to the dominant in B flat major. So I had to make sure I had that B flat in there so that it, it makes everything cohesive. Now, a little secret is that the actual, the, the actual notes in the scale don't matter as much as the starting and ending notes. Okay. So like if you're heading up, if your scale is going up or your run, the last note you hit leaves the lasting impression to the listener's ear. Whereas the initial note, I mean, that's the starting point. So usually it's going to be a bit lower in the mix and that one may, doesn't really matter as much. However, if you're, let's say uh, going descending, um, and let's say you're crescendoing while you do the run as well, then the higher note also matters because that's very clear to our ear. But when it gets to the bottom and that's the impact moment, we also need to hear that destination note as correct. It has to fit with everything else. Of course, it's contextual, but in terms of like most Western diatonic music, that's the case, okay? Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, those are just a few examples, but uh, just to summarize, I prefer to use runs going into moments of tension or like going into a downbeat where I want a little extra oomph. And uh, it, it just makes it feel like there's like fluttering things. There's things happening in the background that are supporting the overall theme. And if I have that feeling, then it makes everything just, you know, feel a little better inside. It makes me feel more warm and everything. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and, and then also uh, using the runs for moments of coming out of tension. So like if you have something hit, but you don't want the figures to stop right away, then you can actually have them go a little bit longer, but then, you know, accordingly they should, um, they should decrease in the amount of tension you have. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's kind of self-explanatory, uh, theoretically it's easy to understand, but some, some more specific questions are like, you know, what types of scales and what types of runs should I be using? So things like solid and broken chords, arpeggios are really good. If, for example, if you're doing a, a theme in C major, then obviously a, a C major, um, arpeggio or run would be good if you're doing C major at that moment. Um, I tend to like to use the same chord that the um that that the chord is doing at the moment so the run is usually in the same key or playing the same chord as the uh as the chord of the moment and then when they come out of it they then they do the they, they do the same thing so whatever is um happening at that downbeat whatever chord that is if it's an f major then the run will be kind of like an f major thing but if those two chords are very similar like if i'm going from a c major to an f major i'll try to find a run that's uh that's in kind of like c to c for example but with a b flat in the middle because it's in f major and then when it comes out of it um, i might choose just a regular c major run going down so you know completely diatonic to c major without a b flat but that's that's called that's all like nuance and it's it's kind of experimental you just got to play around with it and see what works for you um, but in this piece you know the runs aren't meant to stand out they're just meant to enhance and make the whole thing fuller and as long as it gives that desired effect of lending another texture to the overall thing. I think that's the best. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that makes sense. I will see you in tomorrow's video with another quick tip. Have a great day. Bye-bye.